I was thinking about um, what I should say, and I went, first of all, I went to the library and I went to get these books you're working with, Pendua and uh, the monkey, and uh, I looked around and I found that one, and I opened that one also, and I thought, I thought wow. Where should I start? <laughs> and I thought, okay, I just open somewhere, and that, that's that's where I'm going to start. So I opened that book, and I felt it's strange. I fell into a, a poem, and um, I'm just going to read that poem if that's okay to you. It's a poem um, from a, actually a French author. It's called Jacques Prévert. And um, it's called To Paint the Portrait of the Bird. Everybody knows what's a portrait. It's just paint the, the bird. First, paint a cage with an open door. Then, paint something pretty, something simple, something beautiful, something useful for the bird. Then, place the canvas against a tree, in a garden, in a wood, or in a forest. <sighs> Hide behind the tree, without speaking, that moving. Sorry. Sometimes the bird comes quickly, but he may take long years before deciding. Don't get discouraged. Wait. Wait years if necessary. How fast or how slow the bird comes has nothing to do with the success of the picture. When the bird comes, if he comes, observe the most profound silence till the bird enters the cage. And when he has entered, gently close the door with a brush. Then erase all the bars, one by one, taking care not to touch any of the bird's feathers. Then paint the portrait of the tree choosing the most beautiful of its branches for the bird. Paint also the green foliage and the wind's freshness, the dust of the sun and the noise of, of the creatures in the grass in their summer heat. And then wait for the bird to decide to sing. If the bird doesn't sing, it's a bad sign, a sign that the painting is bad. But if he sings, it's a good sign, a sign that you can sign. So then, very gently, you pull out one of the bird's feathers and you write your name in a corner of the picture. So that's a poem I found. And uh, I remember the first, um, the first talk I had with Tocho-san when I came here. And uh, the first impression also of this place. And the, the, the incredible thing is that everywhere you look, actually, there are frames. No, look, the windows. And in the windows, there are other frames. And it's a big frame and many, 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 many smaller frames up to come to you. No, that also are frames in, in yourself somehow. Everybody is framed in, in his own body and mind somehow. 
and uh, I was invited to come here. And it's a Zen monastery, so it's about... About what? About people that I see living in this big frame together. Day by day, moment by moment, from freer moments outside, in the nature, working with the aim you were talking about, to nourish themselves, plant things that they can grow. And um, then again to ritualize moments, very strong ritualized moments, like, uh, well, the first that comes to my mind actually is the Zazen sitting. And that's also a frame, look at your cushions. This frame, you're framed into it. <laughs> and you're sitting in a really framed position, really simple. I mean, simpler you cannot think about. You cannot think of sitting simpler than as you, as a position of Zazen. And uh, you're framed and you're, you're in this. So what is Zen? Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, you've been talking about all these days in every rink, or every each of you was talking his own way about these words in these books. I cannot. I I, I am. I cannot talk about words. I could just talk about what I live. I learn about. I learn through what I. I live with my body and my senses and my mind. Mm. So I can talk about what I lived here. So I, my experience here with you. <clears throat> and first I was really afraid of these frames, really. I told also Dodgers that I'm really scared about these frames because I feel like I'm framed, I get framed. And I'm, I'm everything else down square. I'm somehow completely tortured. And then you get into that frame and this tortured thing comes out even more. It's even not more obvious. So it's scary, you know? But then I noticed that in these uh, ritualized moments that are like, for me, huh? They like stop a rhythm of doing. You do, you work in the earth, you do, or you cut wood all the morning, and then suddenly it goes and you're all together concentrated in this frame, in this special rhythm, like you begin with chanting and you get into that. It's another it's a change of time somehow, the change of concentration. And it, 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 it actually invites you to, to be to be conscious in your being, to, to, be, to, to be conscious, actually just saying, be more conscious, even cutting wood, be, be there, cutting the wood, be. So these rituals, I got, I, was, I got less scared of doing them with you together more and more, <clears throat> because I saw the meaning of it, well, I felt the meaning for me, and I, I even started to like them even started to like doing them. And I even started to begin to be doing them. Because before I was just thinking about what I had to do, like running after what I should do. But then suddenly, whoa. So it's very, for me, very uh, big treasure to experience these things with you. That's one thing. And then um, I think it's just amazing how you live together. I mean, as we said, you're all so bloody different. <laughs> so really, really deeply different. Not even culturally, but so the language and also humanly. I mean, you come from so such different places. And you, 
and it's just a great pleasure to share time with you. I can't say less, I can't say more, it's just, that's it. Because we, you meet on a level, of course it's not, for, I'm sure it's not always like that, but for me, <clears throat> that doesn't spend that much time with you. I see that you meet on a level where, where I, feel, I feel deep respect. I have the feeling that you, even if you don't share the same opinions or the same tastes or the same aims, but there's a respect, mutual respect, that I think should be basically human and should be a base for communication in any frame in this society, actually, in, on the world. <laughs> Switzerland, I'm Swiss, <clears throat> had a, a big vote. The, the, <clears throat> the right side of the politicians, they did a... a they started a thing saying, we don't want mass immigration. What does that mean? We don't want strangers to come in mass. They, they, we don't want them to, we want to keep secure. We want to keep our frame closed so we're sure inside this frame, you know. So it gets rigid and it isolated. And here, even if the frames are quite rigid, I feel like it's flowing, you know, all the time. So I'm like, wow, why even, even very much? Yeah. And I wish that actually for my country too. <laughs> for, I mean, a country also is a frame, no? On Taiji, you could say, you could look at it as a country also, as a, it's an organism. Hmm? I'm actually uh, deeply impressed about this organism, I must say, how you are on many levels. And that's it. You know, I was so stressed when I had to do tens. I was really, I was, I thought I was going <laughs> to die. Really, I was, I was going to run into the woods and <laughs> disappear there, <laughs> get eaten up by the bears <laughs> before I have to feed you. <laughs> but then, I don't remember who was it, maybe Eko-san or many people just looked at me and said, you know, it's just about practice. You know, it's just about... And then you get like another... You, you look at it differently. It's not about you. Yes, of course, you have to do it, of course. You have to take responsibility of that. But, ah, responsibility is also a word here. That's a very important word, I think, no? Self-responsibility, so responsibility for the group. And who said that? Yeah, you, Eko-san, you said that. Now you're part of the Sangha. And I said, yes, probably for this moment, because I was able to take responsibility also for myself, but also for, for you giving, to being able to give at the right time, mostly. <laughs> so, yeah, all these things, it's, it works so much in my mind. There's so many impressions and uh, informations. But anyway, it's about, um, yeah. So back to Zen, I don't know. People are going to ask me, how was it, you know? <laughs> And I'm gonna say, uh, watch the film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm.